I'm Andrea Taylor, and I'm the founder of BrickCityLive.com, and I do not have a clicker with me. All right. So Brick City is the nickname for Newark, New Jersey, and Brick City Live connects Newarkers to information and resources about Newark and to each other. Before I really describe in detail what Brick City Live is, you can see our content site right here, I want to talk a little bit about why I think now is a great time to be pursuing this venture. So I'm a lifelong Norker, and all of us lifelong Norkers are used to, be, to Nork being the butt of a lot of jokes and the recipient of a lot of dubious distinctions. Uh, Conan O'Brien famously got into a beef with uh, Cory Booker, <laughs> our former mayor and now senator from New Jersey. And I, I'm used to getting this type of reaction when I tell people that I'm building a content business out of Nork. Now, as a Norker, this can be a little bit disheartening, but as an entrepreneur, I'm actually uh, smiling inside when I see people do this because we know something about Newark at Brick City Live that a lot of people don't know. And part of our business is actually uh, becoming purveyors of that information. We're going to actually build and scale our business by telling people things that are surprising about Newark right now. So what are those things? Well, Newark is a city of about 300,000 people. It's just shy of 25, or I'm sorry, just over 25 square miles. Uh, largest city in New Jersey, but pretty small city in the scheme of things yet it is the kind of home of this embarrassment of riches. Newark has all this stuff going for it. And what we're seeing right now is that there is unprecedented investment in these riches happening. In fact, uh, this is actually a view from my living room window. I look out at about half a billion dollars in investment sort of rising up from the ground just by looking out of my window. So how are we going to actually uh, take that opportunity and make a business out of it? You're looking here at our flagship project, which is our content news site. Uh, we launched this in late August of 2013, so we've been at this for just over nine months now. And on this site, we cover the types of stories about this resurgence um, that you won't find anywhere else. And we also uh, look at some of the critical issues around this resurgence. This is a recent article that we published about the art scene in Newark, which is very ro robust, and this question about gentrification that kind of happens when any sort of distressed city or a city that's known for being distressed has a resurgence, what happens to the people who help to drive it? This, uh, this article got a lot of traction for us. And we also cover the people who make this possible. You're looking at selections from our style section, and these are some of the people that are really driving Newark forward that you won't find reported, reported on on any other news source uh, in Jersey. This is me. We actually did a little, uh, a little story about the founder last fall. Um, so for our first uh, year, our focus was really on um, creating credibility, um, positioning ourselves as the source among key influencers in town. We wanted to be the place that folks look to for quality journalism, quality reporting about what was happening and what was new in the city, and for the newsmakers and the influencers to, to look to us um, as a credible source. And we've done that very successfully. We just wrapped up a mayoral election and the candidates all reached out to us to cover. Um, developers have been calling us to uh, write stories about new development coming, developments coming to town, small businesses reached out to us to publicize their business. Uh, during the course of this past year, we actually haven't focused much on um, marketing. So everything that we've done has been viral. And we posted some pretty, uh, some pretty uh, modest numbers. So 15K monthly uniques we're up to right now. Keep in mind, though, that Newark is a, is a city of 300,000 people. 40% um, of our traffic actually comes from outside of New Jersey, not just Newark. Um, 175K monthly page views. What this is telling us is that we have a kind of a small nugget of very high repeat visitors. People are coming back to our site on an average of every other day. Um, and we also collected, again, passively on the website, 2,000 email addresses. So this is where we're starting, and we're really looking to build on this foundation with some more, um, with some more marketing tactics in the next year. And this is how we plan to do it. So five major um, tactics. The first is content partnerships. Right now, we're talking to the Greater Newark Visitors Bureau about providing content to them uh, on a monthly basis. Media sponsorships, where we provide media services for big tentpole events in town and get our lo logo on those events marketing materials. Distribution networks, namely the New Jersey News Commons, which makes our content eligible to be seen on local news sites all around the state. Um, continuing to be very strategic about who we're covering and, and gathering audience that way, and also intercepting our audience on social media. Um, one of the things that we discovered in, terms, in, in the course of doing this is that doing news is not the only way we can do, deliver value. So two of the things that we're also working on right now are a citywide loyalty program um, for restaurants. Uh, restaurants would actually pay to be part of this network uh, for the loyalty program. 
and also delivering content in a lesson-based way as opposed to uh, through news. We actually started teaching classes on digital media to local businesses as a way to prime our sales funnel, but found that businesses were actually interested in paying for these as a thing in, it, in itself, so we're going to really continue to push that. A little bit about me. Um, I know this town very well. I'm a fourth generation Norker. I'm also a, a graduate of Columbia Journalism School, and while I was there, I reported on Nork almost exclusively, and that's where I developed the idea for this business. I'm the former director of content marketing at Bitly, and there I learned how to create content very economically. And I've also worked at startups for my entire career, so I really understand how to make these things go. Um, very briefly, just to look at kind of the current news environment in Newark that I'm stepping into, this is NJ.com, and you'll see kind of the, the type of content you'll typically find on here, very distinct from what we do on Brick City. And we have two blogs in town, not updated frequently, no feature news stories, and Newark Patch, which is kind of meeting the fate of all the patches nationwide. Really quickly, um, on, our content, on our revenue, so we're looking to be at a run rate of uh, north of $85,000 a year by this time next year, and four major tranches. Brick City Bucks, where restaurants pay to be a part of a loyalty program, classes for small businesses, distributed content, and standard banner ads. And lastly, at this juncture, we're really seeking freelancers to build our content, salespeople to sell in Brick City Bucks and banner ads, developer specifically for Brick City Bucks, which is going to be a virtual wallet style um, loyalty program, and some funding. We know we're not uh, eligible for venture funding, but uh, foundation funding, uh, local reporting funding, et cetera, we'd really be interested in capturing. So that's Brick City Live, and I will take your questions now. Thank you. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a question about one of the statistics that you mentioned, which mm -hmm. is that you have a significant amount of people visiting your site not from Newark. Mm -hmm. So this is more of just a comment of there may be a way to also monetize those people in a different way than you would um, the people from Newark that are coming to your site. Right. I think that's a complete, you know, I think that's an opportunity to, to just like pay special attention. That's a great point, and actually when I look at my audience, I actually see them in two sets. One is the sort of permanent audience, so those are people who live in or near Newark. But we also have a major opportunity for what I call the provisional audience, mm. um, and it's a couple different sets. Uh, during the recent election, there was a lot of national attention being paid because Cory Booker is a national figure. So when we publish stories about Raz Baraka, who is the new, um, who is the new mayor, I looked at our Google Analytics, and we had coverage everywhere but Montana. So people from every state were checking out our stories. Um, and it happens whenever we publish stuff that kind of has more broad resonance outside of Newark. Mm -hmm. The other big opportunity, um, and this is specifically with the Greater Newark Visitors Bureau, is that Newark has, um, as a city, a highly provisional sort of turnover audience. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people who actually stay in Newark when they're staying in Manhattan. It's kind of like the cheap way to do Manhattan. They stay at these local hotels. Right. So that's, that's what that play is. Right. Um, and yeah. I think that's actually where a really big opportunity is for us to develop content for yeah, that audience. Agreed. I thought the, the view out your window was compelling, mm -hmm. but is there a lot more information that you could boil down and just show in terms of how money is flowing into Newark? And, you know, I just think that there's, there's got to be, whether you're working with the government or, or whatever, there's sure. got to be a lot more numbers that you can throw at somebody like myself. Yeah. And while the view from your, your window is interesting, I can only imagine what, you know, the view is across the entire city. Yeah, um, it, it's really compelling. Actually, um, there's a um, small business development corporation, Brick City Development Corporation, and they estimate that about $5 billion in investment, either currently or in the pipeline at five years. I think that's, I mean, I think that's a helpful statistic, especially if you're presenting to investors. Right. Definitely. And infographics like that might be really fun to play with on the site. I'm a big fan. I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. Um, I disagree a little bit that locally Newark and Pulse are, are, are not doing anything. Um, and I just wonder, they, they, they will say almost the same message mm -hmm. that, that you do. I wonder if there's any teaming up. This is the cooperative person part of me. Yep. The other suggestion I would give you, and I do think that Newark will stay in the news with RAS. Um, and I don't know if you saw the New Yorker story last week yes. about the education. So it just mm -hmm. continues to be a big, a big deal. Um, have you thought about doing a podcast component? One of the th things that I found surprising in the news comments is that we get more traffic for that than anything else. Um, yes. Yeah, so on the question about Globally and Pulse, um, when I first launched Brick City Live, and it, just so you guys know, we kind of, Debbie and I kind of have spoken before, and she's very uh, influential in this, in this uh, environment. So 
I, I spoke with both Tamara and Derek within weeks of launching the site. We met, we talked about some collaboration potential, but what they both said to me is, you know, we're interested in posting events, et cetera, but the sort of feature news journalistic stuff that you do is not our space. Hmm. And they basically ceded that space to me. So that's the, that's the kind of distinction I'm trying to make. They definitely post, uh, they post stuff, but it's not every day and it doesn't kind of seek to be this. And they both basically said that that's what their intention was. Um, in terms of collaboration, we actually have talked about coming together to cover much larger events. So for instance, Open Doors is a very big art festival that happens in Newark every fall. And we talked about kind of approaching, attacking that, dividing up the work, and then cross-promoting. So we have a, a, I have a relationship with both of those guys. Um, and then to your question about, I'm sorry, I lost uh, Podcast. Podcasting, yeah. So it's something we're talking about. Um, we actually just reported on um, a new um, shared space that's going to be opening downtown Newark uh, once a week. They're going to have folks at an art gallery uh, uh, co-working together. Um, we're talking to Brick City Development Corporation about doing a weekly podcast on entrepreneurship in Newark from that space. Very good. Yes. So, um, hi, sorry. Um, uh, so I spent half of my life looking at um, local newspapers. So Trinity Mirror, people in the U.S. know us for the Daily Mirror, but we actually own like 100 and odd regional newspapers. I'm actually really, really bullish on the revenue prospects for local propositions, simply because local businesses, they, since the death of local newspapers, they don't know where to put their money. Yes. And they're going to mainly Google, to Facebook, and they're reaching the end of where they can get this, so they're trying to drive footfall. Um, so I'm really bullish for you on that, but I'm just, I think what I would like to see is how specifically your ad proposition is going to help those people drive footfall. And secondly, the biggest challenge that you, you face is um, providing metrics on efficacy of driving footfall in, in, into stores. If you can just prove that just a little bit, mm -hmm. you will find your ability to sell will increase dramatically. And it's not an impossible challenge. Um, and the only thing I would say is, the thing that I'm scared of here is that with local advertising markets, the simpler the proposition, yes. the better trying to convince your, you know, your uh, average retailer is, is going to be interested. I'd, I personally, I'd like to see more about that, those propositions, et cetera, because that will really, really drive the value there. Um, and then the second point that I had was, you, sh you sound like you have an amazing uh, DAU over MAU statistic, are you daily active users over monthly active users? Yes. And essentially, your user attention. Put that figure up. Don't be afraid to shout about it. Mm -hmm. From what I, what I understood, it sounds ve it's quite significantly higher than average. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you, sh you should shout, shout about that, but definitely would like to know more about how you're going to deal with this local advertising challenge. Do I have time for a quick response? Uh, yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, so that's actually something I, I encountered. I come from the programmatic ad display world. I'm used to uh, talking about advertising very uh, differently, and um, it was a quick uh, it was a, a quick wake up call when I, I started going into these local businesses. So I definitely simplified the message, and those marketing classes were actually my way of forcing myself to do that. Um, the thing that we're doing in, in terms of metrics is really tying um, our ads to coupons. And we found that that, that redemption piece, just as a, a little bit of validation, has been really helpful for, for those businesses. Do you have any metrics you can share yet? Not yet. I actually haven't launched yet. Okay, cool. Yeah, but that's been the conversation. I've actually sold ads to two, to two advertisers so far. Isn't that the point of your loyalty program? And that's the point of my loyalty program. I'm being told to wrap it up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you.